In the fourth year of our marriage, Willow was in a car accident. When she woke up, her memory was stuck in the time when she was deeply in love with her unforgettable first love. She refused to believe that we were married, saying that she had always hated me the most. I tried everything to make her remember our four years together, but nothing worked. Later, after an accident, I watched her run desperately toward her unforgettable first love, and I finally got tired. On the day I agreed to the divorce, she suddenly remembered me, but I had already given up. Chapter 1 the day Willow woke up, she was adamant about divorcing me. As I walked to the door with a pot of soup I had simmered all night, she threw a cup of water at my feet. Get out. I don't want to see you. A few drops of scalding hot water splashed onto the back of my hand. I forced a smile, pretending not to care, and said, I made some soup. Could you drink it first, please? Willow turned her back on me, unwilling to look at me, and only said two words, Get out. Chapter 2 After putting down the soup and leaving, I could no longer maintain the smile on my face. Outside the hospital, I squatted by the roadside, biting a cigarette that wasn't even lit, feeling a bit bitter. This was the fourth year of my marriage to Willow. By then, I had pursued her for nearly four years, using all my strength just to have her notice me. But even that tiny bit of affection she had for me is now gone. I thought aimlessly that marrying Willow back then was truly a stroke of luck. Willow had a lover at that time. I couldn't bring myself to break up someone else's relationship. I simply loved Willow silently. Not once did I cross any lines. If Makoto hadn't decided to go abroad, I wouldn't have even had the chance to pursue Willow. After Makoto left the country, I finally started openly courting Willow. It wasn't until four years ago that Willow agreed to marry me. That day was just an ordinary dinner for the two of us. After the meal, she casually said, George, let's go get our marriage certificate someday. It took me a full 30 seconds to realize I hadn't misheard. When I finally reacted, I quickly said, wait for me, and ran out. In the end, I only bought a bouquet of flowers because I was afraid that if I took any longer, Willow might change her mind and leave. My heart was racing, and my palms were sweaty from excessive nervousness. That night, I knelt on the ground holding the flowers, and my eyes embarrassingly started to well up. I looked up at Willow in her seat, wearing a beautiful dress, radiant and stunning. Whether in the past or now, she has always been the person I love. I made a heartfelt vow to her, word by word. Willow, will you marry me? I promise I will always be good to you. She took my flowers, and my drifting heart finally settled back in place. Later, I proposed to her again. A dreamy, beautiful setting. Gifts, rings, and I invited all of our families and friends to witness it. I knew that Willow agreeing to marry me wasn't because she loved me very much. Maybe she just saw how persistent I was. Or perhaps it was simply because it was time for her to get married. If Willow wanted to get married, I certainly wouldn't refuse. We've been married for four years, and I've always been happily following her around feeling content just to be with her. It didn't matter if she didn't love me much. My love for her was enough. If Willow hadn't been in a car accident and lost her memory, reverting back to the time when she was deeply in love with her unforgettable first love, Makoto, I think I would have been willing to continue this beautiful dream into the next life. The worst part is not that Willow hates me now or refuses to acknowledge our marriage, but that Makoto has returned. Willow's unforgettable first love, Makoto. Chapter 3. There's no way Willow could hide this from him. Actually. After Willow woke up, both of our parents gently informed her that she had been married to me for four years. Even our marriage certificate was laid out in front of her. Willow just glanced at it and didn't look again. So what? If we're married, we can get divorced. Who knows what tricks he used to get me to marry him? And I clearly remember that I love Makoto. The more they talked, the more agitated Willow became, despite her still recovering body, causing her severe headaches. The doctor said that in such situations, we should go along with the patient and avoid upsetting her as much as possible. After hearing that, I stood silently at the door, staring at Willow in her hospital bed for a long time. Then I told both sets of parents not to mention it to Willow again. I carefully packed the marriage certificate in a box and stored it at the bottom of a cabinet. All the photos we took together over the past four years were put away in my suitcase. Every couple's item we had bought during those years was also packed away. I tried to encourage myself, saying it was okay if she forgot me, and it was okay if she hated me. I would just pursue her all over again but Makoto's return caught me completely off guard. Chapter 4. He hadn't changed much since high school, still always wearing that humble and gentle demeanor, with a face that always radiated warmth and kindness. I felt a deep bitterness inside, thinking absent-mindedly. Makoto might seem gentle, but he's nowhere near as good at taking care of people as I am. Why is Willow so fixated on him? The next day, when I arrived at the hospital, I ran straight into Makoto. It was my old friend David who had told me about Makoto's return but I hadn't expected him to come directly to the hospital, holding the bone broth I had prepared. I felt a bit lost standing outside the room, 
Watching the two of them, they were talking, completely absorbed in each other, and then Willow suddenly chuckled softly. Her face, which had always been pale, now looked flushed, much more lively. When they saw me enter, their conversation halted, and an awkward silence filled the room. I gripped the thermos tighter and forced a smile as I said gently, Willow, I made the soup you like. Please have some while it's hot. Before she could respond, Makoto chimed in with a warm voice. Willow, you're just recovering. You shouldn't drink something as greasy as this. I brought you some supplements. I was stunned. Willow's injuries this time were most severe in her head and foot. So every time I visited, I would prepare bone broth the night before and bring it to her the next day. Even though Willow always told me to get out whenever I came, I knew that after I left, she would drink at least a little. But this time, I suddenly wasn't so sure. So I put the soup aside and casually said, I'll go out for a smoke. Before quickly making my escape, it was a bit embarrassing. Just before I left, I heard Makoto say, he's still the same. Willow replied indifferently, he's always like that. Her voice carried a faint tone of annoyance. Chapter 5 After that day, I stopped going to the hospital. Instead, I made different dishes and had my parents bring them to Willow. The day before Willow was discharged, my friend David invited me out for a drink. He knew I had been troubled lately, and said he wanted to show me something interesting. When I arrived, I was surprised to see that Makoto was there too. I paused, realizing what David wanted me to see. David handed me a drink, then said, If you're going to play the role of a fool, at least don't do it like this. Makoto, my buddy liked Lou, the campus bell, but at that time, you were still her boyfriend. He accepted it and never let his feelings show. Then you up and decided to leave the country, giving up on the relationship. And it took this idiot George two more years to finally marry Lou. And now, after an accident, you come back to take advantage of the situation. Are you even human? I don't know what David did to get him there, but he was clearly already drunk. I just pulled him up and said calmly, stop drinking, let's go home. David, red-faced, pointed a finger at me, angry at my lack of resolve. Are you a coward? That's your wife. I remained silent. At that moment, Makoto suddenly stood in front of me. He smiled and said, so what if Willow broke up with me after I left for abroad? After all these years, doesn't she still love me? Oh, and you probably didn't know, did you? She was way cuter when she was with me than she ever was with you. She would. He didn't get to finish his sentence because I had already punched him. Was I angry? Furious? Of course. She's the woman I've loved for nearly eight years, and because of one accident, everything I've worked for has been wiped away. So who should I blame? Why does someone like him get to win Willow's love without even trying? And if he had it, why didn't he cherish it? What he threw away so carelessly was what I had fought so hard to attain. I cursed under my breath and then put all my strength into the next hit. In the end, Makoto was curled up on the ground holding his head, and I gave him another kick. Don't you dare talk about your past with her. Who do you think you are? Chapter 6 The next day, I found out that David's intention was to help me vent, but Makoto had deliberately provoked me. The doctor had scheduled her discharge for the afternoon, but the next morning, just as I was about to leave, I found that Makoto had already brought Willow back. He still had the marks from the beating I gave him last night. I happened to be at the hospital this morning when Willow was being discharged, so I brought her back. Willow stood in front of him, frowning as she looked at me. George, apologized to Makoto. I was stunned, unable to find the words for a moment. Makoto gently pulled Willow's hand. Willow, it's fine. George was just drunk last night, and that's why he started a fight with me. There's no need for an apology. His expression was warm as if he genuinely didn't want us to argue. The scene was so ridiculous that I couldn't help but laugh. I laughed so hard that I ended up coughing. After calming down, I sneered and said, Makoto, you're truly despicable. Makoto's face changed, but he stayed silent. George, Makoto's right. You're exactly the same as you were in high school. You haven't changed at all. Willow's expression was filled with disgust, as if I were nothing more than trash on the side of the road. In high school, you were just a troublemaking student who only knew how to fight and smoke. And now, you're still the same, still the same person I can't stand. I closed my eyes lightly, replaying her words in my mind like a form of self-torture. That's right, I finally understood. The Willow who had lost four years of memories with me only felt disgust towards me. Just like when she first saw me in high school, she would have rather walked around me than acknowledge my presence. But back then, even a fleeting glance from her was enough to make me happy for a long time. I lowered my head weakly and finally spoke in a hoarse voice, clinging to the last shred of my dignity. Tell him to leave. This is our home, not his. Makoto, having achieved his goal, said a few gentle words to Willow before putting down his things and leaving. The next day, Willow handed me the signed divorce papers. This is the divorce agreement. Look it over, and if there's nothing wrong, sign it. I froze. Then I turned away. I won't sign it. Willow frowned, clearly irritated. Why won't you sign? 
if it's about money, we'll split everything 50 50 -ths. You can even keep this house, and I'll give you an extra million. This house was one I had bought, meant to be our marital home, and it had taken up most of my savings. I took a deep breath and pushed the divorce papers back to her. I won't sign. Willow looked at me angrily, as if she couldn't understand why I refused. Finally, she couldn't take it anymore and shouted, but I don't even like you. I love someone else. Won't you sign even knowing that? Chapter 7. After she said that, the living room fell into a long, heavy silence. I swallowed the pain in my heart and hoarsely retorted, you liked me once, you just forgot. Willow froze. In the end, she stood up and walked away, leaving behind only one sentence. Suit yourself, waste your time if you want. I sat alone in the empty living room, suddenly uncertain how much longer I could hold on. After that day, Willow and I fell into a cold war. She wouldn't eat the meals I prepared, and while she slept in the master bedroom, I slept in the guest room. The injury from the car accident still prevented Willow from standing for long periods. Knowing she wouldn't swallow her pride, I would cook every day and then head to the studio. Only when I came back and saw that she had finished the food would I finally relax. When David found out, he cursed at me over the phone. You're really being a simp, aren't you? I was kneading dough at the time, and his words made me pause for a moment. In the end, I replied bitterly, David, she just doesn't remember. In fact, I had never told anyone that during the four years after Willow agreed to marry me, she had never been like this. During those four years, Willow was a very good partner. We would date, kiss, and love each other like any normal couple. On winter nights when I picked her up from work, she would jump into my arms in her thick coat and slip her hands into mine obediently. On the way home, she would chatter away about the funny things that happened at work. We'd roll dice to decide who would cook and who would wash the dishes. Though in the end, I usually ended up doing both. We'd go grocery shopping together, and she'd make me change my avatar to something silly. We'd wear pajamas and curl up on the couch together, watching movies and betting on who the killer was. She would get angry, refusing to eat and changing my avatar back, telling me not to change it again. But at work, she would transform back into the calm and poised manager Lou. During those four years, she would decisively reject any suitors who came her way. So I had once been loved by her, and letting go now was anything but easy. I wanted to try a little harder. After all, eight years had passed. So what were one or two more? I found every excuse to take Willow to the places we visited during those four years of marriage. I naively thought that maybe, just maybe, she might remember. But each time, without fail, she would either be called away by a phone call from Makoto or spend the entire time chatting with him on her phone. Eventually, Willow stopped going out with me altogether. I would also try to talk to her about those four years, but Willow rarely responded. If I talked too much, she would impatiently interrupt and tell me to stop. Seeing her engrossed in her phone, chatting with Makoto, I suddenly fell silent. Chapter 8. In two weeks, it would be Willow's birthday. I had booked the venue long in advance, decorating the private room beautifully to suit Willow's tastes. On the morning of her birthday, I got up early to cook her a bowl of longevity noodles. After watching her finish eating, I handed her a small box. Willow, happy birthday. Recently, Willow and I had slowly returned to something like a friendly state. She wasn't as resistant to me anymore, and the argument about the divorce seemed to have been deliberately forgotten by both of us. But deep down, I knew clearly that we could never go back to those four years. Willow thanked me and then asked, can I open it now? I nodded. Inside was a dress, the moment I saw it. I knew my Willow would look stunning in it. When she unfolded the dress, a spark of delight flickered in her eyes. The tightness in my chest loosened instantly. Then I said, I've booked a dinner at your favorite restaurant tonight. If you like, you could wear this. Later, I accompanied Willow to her parents' house for lunch and stayed until the evening. In the evening, Willow and I were supposed to head to the restaurant I had reserved. But just as we were about to leave, she received a call and hesitated. I need to go out to see a friend. You go ahead. I'll be there soon. As she reached for her phone. I saw the name on the screen, Makoto. I watched her leave without even giving me a chance to say anything. Not even a single glance back. I wanted to stop her, to ask if she would really come back after meeting him. But deep down, all I wanted was to hold her back and keep her with me. In the end, I went to the restaurant alone. Willow said she would come, so I waited for her. That night, I waited from 6 p.m. onwards. I sent her texts and called her. There was no response. And eventually, her phone was turned off. I waited until midnight. Two waiters, awkwardly pushing each other, finally came up to me. Mr. Wong, we're sorry, but the restaurant closes at 1 a.m. I was stunned. The food, which had been reheated half an hour ago, had gone cold again. The cake I made myself was left in a corner, and the roses had lost their freshness. The waiters exchanged pitying glances that only deepened my embarrassment. But what hurt the most deep down? It was that. Willow, you said you would come. 
Why did you lie? That night, when I went home, Willow didn't return. I sat alone in the living room for the entire night. Chapter 9 The next day, I saw Willow, whom I had waited for all night, on Makoto's social media. Last night, Makoto had taken Willow to a music festival concert. She was wearing Makoto's jacket, her smile carefree and radiant in a way I hadn't seen in a long time, and the warmth and joy in her eyes were almost tangible. The timing couldn't have been worse. Just as I put down my phone, Willow walked in. She looked at me on the sofa, her expression momentarily stunned. Then, as if remembering something, she spoke with a hint of panic. I'm sorry about last night. I forgot. After a sleepless night, I was genuinely exhausted. I tried to force a smile, wanting to say something, anything, whether it was a question or an expression of anger, but I realized I had nothing to say. I felt nothing. Seeing my silence, she hurriedly added, Last night, Makoto mentioned wanting to go to the music festival, so I went with him. Then my phone died, so I couldn't call you. You probably didn't wait long for me and went back early, right? I lowered my gaze and replied softly, Yes, I understand. The atmosphere was too stifling, so I stood up. I'm going to the studio. As I walked past Willow, she suddenly called out to me, George, don't you have anything else you want to ask? What should I ask? I didn't want to ask anything. No. With that, I left. At that moment, I suddenly remembered a conversation I had with David. What makes you think she'll ever remember you? How did I answer back then? I was so confident. I believe in her. But Willow, I think I'm reaching my limit. After that day, both Willow and I became busy. I had my photography studio and Willow was tied up with the year-end tasks at her company. Sometimes, we were so busy that we didn't even have dinner together for two or three weeks. Meanwhile, Makoto posted several photos on social media of him having meals with Willow. I knew he was doing it for me to see. As I looked at those photos, a strange sense of indifference began to creep in. It felt like, for a long time, my life had revolved entirely around Willow. I had told David that I wanted to try my best to help Willow remember me, but somewhere along the way, without me realizing it, that thread had loosened. At the end of the month, our high school class president suddenly organized a reunion. I hadn't planned to go, but the class president sent me several private messages saying he needed to talk to me and asked me to come. So, I cleared my schedule for that night. Deep down, I wondered if Willow would attend. On the night of the reunion, Willow did come, but she was with Makoto. When Willow and I got married, we kept it low-key. Only a few close friends knew, and almost none of our high school classmates were aware. So now, Seeing the two of them walk in together, everyone assumed Willow and Makoto were a couple. One of the drunk male classmates blurted out, Wow, you two really ended up together after all these years. I watched as Willow opened her mouth to say something, but Makoto quickly interjected, It's been so long, we can't get away without having a drink together, can we? His vague response painted their relationship in an ambiguous light. I looked at Willow, silently hoping for something, but there was nothing. She just smiled and joined the conversation with others. She didn't even glance at me, as if I was just another high school classmate to her. The thread in my heart grew lighter and lighter, almost slipping out of my grasp. Chapter 10 Halfway through the reunion, the class president sent me a message, asking me to step outside for a chat. By the time I finished my cigarette, Diego, the class president, finally spoke up. You liked Willow in high school, didn't you? This wasn't exactly a secret. It wasn't surprising for anyone to have liked Willow back then, but his next sentence left me stunned. The one who scared off the troublemakers in the alley behind the school and who left candies on her desk for an entire semester, that was you, wasn't it? I blurted out. How did you know? Diego patted my shoulder. George, I'm sorry, I saw it, and I knew it was you, but when Willow thought it was Makoto who did all that, I didn't step forward to tell her the truth. For a moment, it was as if I couldn't hear anything. It felt like I had missed a step on the stairs, and my heart skipped a beat. It took me a while to come back to my senses, but before she got together with Makoto, I wrote her a letter telling her everything. How could she think it was Makoto? Diego frowned, equally puzzled. I don't know about that. But when Makoto celebrated getting together with Willow and took us out to dinner, he claimed he was the one who did all those things. A bad feeling suddenly washed over me. Before I could fully process what Diego had said, the smell of smoke filled the air, and the sudden blare of alarm sent everyone rushing out of the restaurant. There was a fire. I froze for a moment, then instinctively ran back inside. Willow was still in there. Diego grabbed my arm instinctively. What are you doing? It's dangerous in there, don't go in. I shook him off. Willow is still inside, because we didn't want to disturb anyone with our noise. The waiter had seated our group in a private room on the far corner of the second floor. By the time I ran in, the first floor of the restaurant was in chaos. People were scrambling to get out, frantic and desperate. The flames were growing, and when I reached the second floor, 
I realized they hadn't noticed the fire outside. A few people were too drunk to stand. And after I yelled that there was a fire and we needed to get out. Those who were still sober began waking the others and dragging them out. I scanned the room and saw Willow. I grabbed her hand and pulled her toward the exit. We didn't exchange a word. She held onto my hand tightly and followed me. As we passed the restroom, she suddenly hesitated and said, Makoto, he just went to the bathroom. Chapter 11. I stopped in my tracks, seeing the panic in her eyes but saying nothing. Feeling her tug toward the restroom, I tightened my grip on her hand and led her outside. There's no time. We need to get out. But he, Willow tried to protest, but I firmly pulled her out with me. Once outside, the firefighters had arrived, and the flames were gradually being brought under control. It was only then that I noticed a large scrape on my arm, though I hadn't felt it before. Now, a sharp pain shot through me. As soon as she was outside, Willow began searching the crowd, thinking about what Diego had said. I was desperate for answers, ignoring the fact that we had just escaped a life-threatening situation. I asked urgently, Willow, do you know who left those candies on your desk for an entire semester? Who chased away those troublemakers? Makoto. The rest of my words got stuck in my throat. I watched as Willow ran toward Makoto who was standing in the distance. Her eyes were red as she sighed in relief. You're okay. Thank goodness. The sight of them embracing so tightly stung my eyes. The fragile thread that had been holding on in my heart finally snapped. The scene was all too familiar. I remembered a day in high school when Makoto got into a fight, and I was passing by while working a part-time job. By coincidence, I knew the guys Makoto was fighting with. When Willow arrived and saw me, she immediately assumed I had sent those guys to cause trouble for Makoto. She looked at me with anger. George, I regret ever helping you. You bully your classmates. Always causing trouble. Don't you know how to show respect? I can't believe I once thought you could change. The disgust in her eyes was so clear that I couldn't find the words to respond. I wanted to say it wasn't true. I wasn't causing trouble. I didn't start that fight. And I hadn't sent anyone to bully Makoto. I wanted to say that I wasn't as bad as she thought. That day, my boss had praised me for being diligent and I was saving every penny I earned from my part-time job. I wasn't disrespectful at all, but it was as if I'd lost my voice. My throat was dry, and I couldn't say a word. I looked at Makoto, hoping he would explain that it had nothing to do with me. But Makoto just glanced at me and said nothing. All I could do was watch as Willow supported Makoto and walked away, step by step. Initially, I hadn't planned on writing a letter to explain that I was the one who had done all those things, but I didn't want Willow to think I was like that. I didn't want her to feel that being liked by someone like me was unbearable. I agonized over it for a week, writing dozens of drafts before finally managing to write a letter that didn't feel too forced. In it, I explained that, yes, I had a temper at first, but I had never bullied anyone. I confessed that I had liked Willow for a long time. I wrote that it was me who had chased off those troublemakers after night study, and I ran away because I was afraid she would misunderstand. I also wrote that I was the one who left those different candies on her desk every day for an entire semester when she was feeling down. There was so much more I wanted to write, but what did I want to say the most? I wanted to say, Willow, I like you so much. I'm not that bad. Really, won't you give me a chance? But tonight, Diego told me that Willow never knew. She never knew it was me. My letter was probably lost in some corner, trampled on, and covered in dirt. My love and courage over all these years had never been known. But when I saw Willow running toward Makoto in that life-or-death moment, so resolute, whether she knew or not didn't seem to matter anymore, I didn't care anymore, I think, it's time to let go, my love for you was never known, and in your memory, I remain the same person you've always seen me as, unremarkable, unchanged, whether Willow knew or not, it doesn't matter anymore, I think, I can't go on with her anymore, that day, I looked at the two of them from afar and then turned to leave, I went to the hospital to get my arm bandaged, and by the time I got home, it was almost 1 a.m. When I returned, the lights were on, and Willow's eyes lit up when she saw me. You're back. I didn't say anything. Just went to the bathroom to wash my face and clear my head. She followed me step by step, talking as she went. I couldn't find you earlier. I looked everywhere. I tried calling, but you didn't answer. You must be tired tonight. I brought some food back for you. Come and eat. What happened to your hand? Did you just get hurt? Did you go to the hospital yourself? Why didn't you tell me? I would have gone with you. I interrupted her. Willow. I agree to the divorce. I thought that with the way I felt about Willow. I would never say those words in my life. But I had overestimated myself. I think. Willow. This is the end for us. Let's put a period on these 10 years of my youth. Chapter 12. After saying those words. I turned and left. It's too late tonight. I'll pack my things and leave tomorrow. Willow reached out to stop me. Why did you suddenly change your mind and decide to divorce? 
My head felt like it was going to explode. I didn't want to say a word. I gently pulled away from her grip. You can have the lawyer draft a new agreement. I don't want your money. You can do whatever you want with the assets. I was utterly exhausted. My body felt like a rusted machine. Too difficult to move. Behind me. I heard Willow's trembling voice. George, are you sure? You're the one who asked for the divorce. There's no going back. I didn't stop walking. Yes, I won't regret it. Lying in bed, I thought, I really need to take a break. That night, I had many dreams, of my childhood, of Willow in high school, and of the Willow I married during those four years. But one thing remained the same, the disdain in her eyes when she looked at me. When I woke up, it was almost 11 a.m. I took my time getting up and started packing. I didn't have much to pack, so it didn't take long. When I went downstairs, I thought that given how eager Willow was to get divorced, I'd have the papers by this morning. But instead, there was breakfast on the table. I was stunned. Willow was sitting on the sofa, acting like nothing had happened. I made breakfast. You should try some. Not too long ago, I would have been overjoyed at this. But now, I felt no happiness at all. I only felt a deep sense of resignation. In the end, I shook my head and declined. No, I'm not hungry. Later, when you have time, send me a message so we can finalize the divorce. Makoto. I don't think he's someone you should trust with your future. You might want to reconsider. On the night of the restaurant fire, if Makoto had really been in the restroom, I wouldn't have ignored someone's life. But in my hurried run back into the restaurant, I saw Makoto rushing out of the restroom. After saying that, I picked up my suitcase and headed for the door. I heard the sound of something shattering behind me. And Willow shouted, George, if you walk out that door, don't ever come back. It was still the house I had lived in for four years. And as I stepped out, a sharp pain stabbed through my heart. I told myself, George, it's really over this time. I went back to my studio, planning to finish the photo shoots I had scheduled with a few clients over the next few days. While I was busy with work, I kept waiting for a message from Willow, but she never sent anything, until one night, I finally received a message from her. George, there was a burglar at the house. I'm scared. Chapter 13. Without much hesitation, I dropped the camera and rushed to Willow's place. I arrived as quickly as I could. When I got there, the living room was a mess, blankets and pillows were scattered all over the floor. The security guards and police were at the door. Willow was sitting on the floor. I steadied my breathing and looked her over from head to toe. Seeing no signs of injury, I felt slightly relieved. I asked softly, can you stand? Willow shook her head and reached out to wrap her arms tightly around my neck. With no other choice, I lifted her and carried her to the sofa. After we finished explaining the situation to the police, I turned on the TV for her to watch while I started cleaning up the living room. As I cleaned, I gave her instructions. You should stay at your parents' place for now. Don't come back until the burglar is caught. When you do come back, remember to take the keys out of the door and if you hear anything, stay in your room and don't come out. Call the police. If you're ever in danger, call the police immediately. I can't always be there to answer your call. As I spoke, I suddenly stopped. I realized that Willow might not want to hear me say these things. George, my stomach hurts. Instinctively, I asked. You haven't eaten dinner yet, have you? She nodded, and I sighed as I headed to the kitchen. I started cooking noodles and then suddenly realized what I was doing. A pair of hands wrapped around my waist, and I froze. My first instinct was to push her away, but Willow's voice came out in a sob. George, I regret it. Can we not get divorced, please? I didn't say anything. I just quietly finished cooking the noodles and brought them to the table for her to eat. After she finished, I finally spoke. Willow, you need to eat properly even when you're alone. One person may have lost their memory but it seemed that the habits ingrained in their soul couldn't be changed. Willow had gotten used to having me around. She was used to someone making her dinner while gently scolding her when she was hungry, or reminding her to put on more clothes when she was cold. When that person suddenly disappears, she might feel lost. But in the end, I think, this is just a false memory. Chapter 14 When my friend David found out that I was getting a divorce from Willow, he was silent for a long time. Finally, he sighed and asked, Are you sure? I stared blankly at my drink. I just nodded in response. I'm planning to close the studio for a while next year and go traveling for a bit. There was just one thing left to do. Willow hadn't given me the divorce papers yet. Reluctantly, I had to send her a message asking when she would be available. But Willow kept putting it off. She'd either say she had work or needed to have dinner with her parents. After a few attempts, I understood what she was doing. I got so busy with the year-end rush of clients that I ended up forgetting about the divorce. Before I knew it, the new year had arrived. During this time, our parents started noticing that something was wrong between us. We usually celebrated the holidays together, but this year it didn't feel right. So I explained the situation to my parents in advance. Then, on the day before New Year's Eve, I got a call from Willow. George, 
Can you come home for dinner tonight? She quickly added, as if afraid I might refuse. My parents want to see you. Since she had even involved her parents, I had no choice but to agree. That evening, I picked up some gifts and then went to Willow's office to pick her up for dinner at her parents' house. The dinner went well enough, and we didn't mention anything about the divorce in front of her parents. After dinner, I helped Willow clean up the dishes before telling her I was leaving. Willow put on her coat to walk me out. We didn't say anything until we reached the parking lot. Then she finally spoke. When I first woke up, I wanted to divorce you. I tried to ignore the pain in my heart and responded lightly. Yeah, you wouldn't even drink the soup I made and told me to get out. Willow smiled a little, but then her smile faded, and she fell silent for a moment before continuing. After I woke up, I kept thinking I loved Makoto, but when I was with him, I wasn't as happy as I thought I'd be. After that night when you wanted to divorce me, I felt strange, and it hurt. George, it's so strange. I don't even remember loving you, so why does it hurt so much? She held on to me. George, can we not get divorced? Can we start over? My heart felt heavy. Finally, I took a red envelope from my bag and placed it in her hand. Willow, happy new year, but we can't go back. Not all mistakes can be undone, and I'm not willing to keep putting myself through this over and over again. After the new year, I found myself with more free time. Willow, on the other hand, started messaging me more frequently after that night. Sometimes she would come to the studio to find me. Other times she would use some excuse to call me over. This continued until last week. This week, however, the messages from Willow suddenly stopped. I only received one message from her. She asked to meet at a cafe this week. When I arrived, Willow was wearing a dark coat, a scarf, and her hair was draped over her shoulders. When she saw me, she smiled. George, you're here. That's when I realized something was off. I hesitated. You've regained your memory, haven't you? Willow silently nodded. Chapter 15 After learning that Willow had regained her memory, we both fell into silence. She looked at me and said, I'm sorry for everything that happened after I lost my memory. I sighed, feeling a whirlwind of emotions. What if Willow had regained her memory sooner? Or what if I had held on just a little longer? But there were no what ifs. I had reached my limit. Willow remained silent for a while before she spoke again. Makoto returned to the country because he lost money trying to start a business abroad and, after hearing about my situation, he rushed back hoping I would give him money. Hearing this, I felt a sense of relief. Since Willow had already found out, she wouldn't be with Makoto anymore. And knowing Willow, she wouldn't let Makoto get away with it either. After discussing what needed to be discussed, we inevitably brought up the topic of divorce. Looking at the woman I had loved for nearly 10 years, I felt nothing but regret and bitterness about the divorce. I'm really sorry. Are you sure you want to go through with it? I nodded. After signing the agreement, we scheduled to go to the Civil Affairs Bureau the following Monday. But just before I left, Willow spoke softly. I didn't know it was you who chased away those troublemakers and left candies on my desk for an entire semester. I always thought it was Makoto. Her voice trembled. George, I'm sorry. It seemed that no one was really at fault. It was just bad luck on my part. Always missing the mark. I later found out that Makoto had thrown away the letter I had written. When I learned this, I stayed silent for a long time, saying nothing. That night, as I was going to bed, I could only think, my luck was really terrible back then. After the divorce was finalized, I followed through with my plan to close the studio and stopped accepting photography jobs. I began planning my travel itinerary for the year. Then I heard from David about Makoto's situation. Apparently, he was being hounded by creditors and had no money to repay them. Desperate. He had resorted to asking old classmates for loans, one by one, but everyone knew what kind of person he was now, so no one was willing to lend him anything. Some even took the opportunity to kick him while he was down. His reputation was completely ruined. He had always cared about his reputation the most, and now it was utterly destroyed. When David told me this, he was practically gloating. Serves him right for taking advantage of others, karma's finally caught up with him. I smiled and hung up the phone, then went back to planning my trip. I ended up traveling for a whole year. I saw many sights I'd never had the chance to see before. During that year, I still thought about Willow sometimes, and I often felt a sense of melancholy and regret about our relationship. I couldn't blame her, but it seemed I couldn't quite forgive either, so I decided to leave it to time. We could be strangers, classmates, friends, maybe even enemies, but it seemed we could no longer be lovers. Perhaps one day, when I've truly let go, I'll sit down with Willow again, have a drink, and chat about the old days. I'll talk about all the foolish things I did when I loved her for those years, and maybe I'll tell her about the year I finally let her go.